Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Half Shirts Will Travel with Wendell. So, last night I was watching a classic movie, The Nutty Professor, the 1963 version, Jerry Lewis. Very famous scene, he makes a drink called the Alaskan Polar Bear Heater. Did you say a polar bear heater? No, you said it. I said an Alaskan polar bear heater. And we could tell that Jerry was making this up on the spot as he went because the measurements are a little odd. He's calling out all of these different ingredients. This bartender is very nervous. I never heard of that. Until now. And at some point he completes his drink and the bartender says, hey, you mind if I've ever seen something like this? Can I try it? He says, sure, go ahead. And the guy takes a little sip. Yeah, yeah, not bad. And then he's just standing there. And Jerry takes a drink, finishes the whole thing off. And the guy is still standing there. And Jerry gives him a little push. And over the bartender goes. So today, we're going to make an Alaskan polar bear heater. First, let me tell you a little about this shirt. Now, you may not know this, but uh, in my various travels, one of my favorite things, of course, is Vegas. Love going to Vegas. Love the casinos. I am pretty fond of roulette. I uh, like to play games of chance. And when I was living out on the West Coast, I used to go quite a bit. Now I'm traveling more through the South and the East Coast. I don't get out quite as often, but I still try and get back when I can. One of my favorite places to stay was the Flamingo Casino. So needless to say, one weekend I'm having a successful weekend at the roulette table and I decide to treat myself. Well, I'm going to go out, I'm going to have a nice dinner, I have my friend with me, I bring him along, we, we have some great food, I go shopping and I'm in the casino gift shop and of course it's the Flamingo Casino. So what do they have? A Flamingo Aloha shirt. Now this shirt made by Paradise Found. Look them up. Great stuff. They actually do a lot of the shirts that were used on uh, the original Magnum PI. And I understand the new one as well. Um, I've got quite a few of their shirts in my collection. One of the things I love about them, Rayon. Rayon was the greatest thing that ever happened to Aloha shirts. Initially, historically, they were made from silk. Uh, rayon was a little more manageable. It was less expensive, easier to take care of, but it had a very similar drape. I think they're so comfortable, they, they breathe, they flow, and I always try and find a good quality rayon shirt whenever I'm on eBay and those kind of things looking for some, uh, for some deals. So highly recommend rayon. Now as you'll see in this, and I'll get up close, we've got this awesome flamingo pattern. We've got the vanishing shirt pocket, they've sewn this in so that when you step back, you don't even see the pocket there. Got the wooden buttons. Okay. Basically, rayon, matched pocket, wooden buttons, quality material. This is a winner. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm in a casino and I've got this shirt that is just an onslaught to your senses. And it, People are going to ask questions like, who is this guy? And I was thinking about this movie, The Nutty Professor. So I went back and watched it. And the, the basic premise, if you haven't seen it, and if you haven't, of course, you need to see this movie. Uh, but Jerry is this very nerdy, unattractive uh, professor, very clumsy, socially inept, who in a Jekyll and Hyde uh, sort of storyline, invents this uh, uh, concoction. And wish I could get the recipe for that. Sorry, we're out of luck. But he invents this concoction he transforms himself into this character he calls Buddy Love. And Buddy is sort of a cross between Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra. Uh, Rat Pack icons of the early 60s. He's clearly making fun of them in the movie. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, casino, cocktail, the flamingo shirt, this all comes together. So that was why I decided to bust this shirt out today, show it off. I wear this one quite a bit. It always gets a double take. Um, but today, we're gonna make the Alaskan polar bear heater. Now, in the movie, Jerry starts calling things out and the measurements are kind of questionable. All right, pay attention. He's saying, sometimes he says a shot, which we're gonna translate to one ounce. Sometimes he says some, just give me some rum. So if he just says some, we're gonna give him a half ounce. Uh, now, there's an interesting story. At the end, we had the scotch. And in, this, in the movie, 
At the very end, the last thing he says is some more scotch, but he never said it in the beginning. And you could probably watch some bartender videos where they will attempt to make this drink also. They will always bring this up. So there's a question of how much scotch do we put in it. I'm going with the idea that if he had some scotch and says some more scotch, that means it was originally a half ounce and then he adds another half ounce. So I'm going to go with one ounce of scotch on this one. Okay. Now, a lot of ingredients, a lot of things going on. So I've got my cheat sheet here. You might see me reading off of this, okay? But to get started, you've often heard me talk about the importance of a good cocktail mixing glass. And I always, or I often forego the cocktail shaker. But as I always say, there is a time and a place. For this drink, we're gonna use a cocktail shaker. So I've got this, one of my favorite types, a Boston shaker. I like when they come with a glass as well as the mixing container. And according to the movie, there was some ice in that drink, not a lot. So we're gonna put, we're gonna put one cube in. I can't get the tongs on it, so we're gonna do this. It's one of my famous clear cubes. I like that for this drink because the idea is it should not be watered down, it should not be broken up. As you'll see as we go on, when we mix it, we mix it very quickly. It's just enough to chill the drink. That's all you want. These ice cubes melt very slowly. They're great for chilling a drink without watering it down. So we're going to go with that clear ice cube to start. Now, in the movie, Jerry calls out for a couple shots of vodka. Two shots of vodka. Two shots of vodka. So we're going to do two ounce pour. Again, under the idea that a shot is one ounce, and he calls for two shots, so we're going to go with two ounces. Next thing, Jerry asks for some rum. A little rum. A little rum. So we're going to do a half ounce of rum. Now, rum, again, this is one of those questionable uh, things in the movie because we're not really sure what the type, and there, there are certainly all sorts of rum to go with. I decided to go with a spiced rum just because I thought it would have a nice smoky flavor to add to this, uh, whatever this is going to end up being. So actually, let me uh, not cheat myself, and there's a half ounce. Okay, so we got a half ounce of rum. Now, we're going to have a couple shots of bitter. Some bitters. bitters. Well, with this, with bitters, we're not obviously going to have two ounces, so we're going to have two dashes. And actually, I think in the movie, he doesn't say how many, he just says some bitters. So we're going with two good dashes. Then comes the catcher. It says a smidgen of vinegar. And a smidgen of vinegar. A smidgen of... Are you going to drink this here, or are you going to take it home and rub it on your chest? The bartender freezes, says, what are you going to do? Are you going to drink this, or are you going to take it home and rub it on your chest? Which then starts this little incident, and Jerry gets built up with the bartender, puts him in his place, and they resume making the drink. Now, we don't really ever see him put the vinegar in in the concoction. And I've watched a few of these uh, bartending things where they talk about it. Everyone who wants to make it decides to forego the vinegar. I'm going to say, we're going to do the vinegar. Now, again, we could have apple cider, we could have clear vinegar, we could have white vinegar, we could have red wine vinegar. I'm going to go with a white wine vinegar today. So he says a smidgen. I don't know what a smidgen is, but I'm going to go with a cocktail uh, mixing spoon. So we're just going to add a little bit of that. In goes the vinegar. Now, after the whole debate with the vinegar, he resumes the concoction. There's some vermouth. All right, let's continue. So, as we've agreed, half ounce of vermouth. And he says a shot of gin. So we're gonna go with an ounce of gin. Jerry calls out for some brandy. Some, that's our cue, half ounce of brandy.
Now up to this point, I want to I want to talk about making cocktails in general. You'll see a lot of people, a lot of places, a lot of parties, a lot of bars. When people are ordering cocktails, they use that bottom of the shelf alcohol because the idea is, well, they're mixing it with other stuff, so it doesn't really matter. You know, by now where I'm coming from on this. If you're going to make a cocktail, use high-end good ingredients. These are going to give you your flavors, which is why in this drink I didn't use bottom-end products. I've got a quality vodka. I've got a quality rum. I've got a quality vermouth. A quality gin. Quality brandy. Stick with that. In the end, you'll see I've got a quality scotch. We'll get back to the scotch. Next thing, Jerry says, some lemon peel. So, we're going to put some lemon peel in this. lemon peel. I'm going to go uh, heat this up a little bit just to get the oils moving because why not? We're going to express that lemon peel in there, get those oils, drop it in. Then he calls for some orange peel. So we're going to do this again. Got to be careful with these things. I got, uh, I've had a slight uh, bar incident and uh, actually from using the peeler so I may be on the lookout for a new peeler anyways we're going to cut off a, a good substantial piece of orange peel we're going to heat that up a little bit we're going to express now you'll note that I often take pride in trimming and preparing my peels I like to trim them make them look real nice for the presentation we're not going to do that in this and I'll tell you why because it's never going to make it to the glass. So it's just there for the flavor, so we can use all the peel we can get. Next, cherry ass or a cherry. Now, again, I could go with anything, but I'm going to go with one of these high-end Luxardos. So we're going to drop that cherry right in there. Then, he gives that much debated uh, final ingredient, he says, some more scotch, but we've never put any in. So going on the idea of some being a half ounce, and he says some more, we're going to go with an ounce of scotch. Again, using a nice quality scotch. If you don't want this to turn into some sort of fire water or a horrifying thing, you got to use good ingredients and give it the best, best chance you can get, get something really good going on. We got that ice in there. Now, Jerry says, mix it real nice, pour it in a tall glass. So, yeah, we've mixed it nice. And in the scene, the bartender doesn't shake it a real long time. He's probably the worst bartender ever. We're gonna use a strainer. Pour it into the glass. And then like Jerry, Cheers. I can't really tell you what this is. I definitely got the citrus from the peel, so that worked. Um, the color's a little odd. Got sort of a cidery look to it. Now, this could come from... My choice to use the spiced rum, I could have gone with the clear rum. The scotch would have definitely added that though, and it is picking up the scotch coloring. I'm grateful for the gin. Get a nice bouquet off that, which pairs really nicely with the vermouth and with the citrus. You know, this could actually work as an interesting variation on old fashioned. Mud a little sugar cube in it. Serve it in a nice cocktail glass on a rocks glass. Maybe even a smoked drink. I could see using this as the basis for a smoke, like a smoked old fashioned. Well, don't discount this drink. 
I would drink that again. I'm going to go back to once again. When you're wearing a shirt like this, you're making a presentation, okay? You've got to command respect. A drink like this in your hand, a shirt like this, people are going to want to know, who is this guy? Does he care about anything? Do I want to know this guy? Do I want to stay away from this guy? That answer is up to you. Anyways, this has been another episode of Have Shirts Will Travel with Wendell. Cheers. If you want more of my thoughts and insights on Aloha shirts, cocktails, gear, tools, or anything else I may think of, please like and subscribe. See you in the next episode of Half Shirts Will Travel.